you applied for O1B and O1B got RFE denied and then you had to figure out what you're going to do. Um, briefly, can you talk about what the O1 visa is? Sure. And then we'll go on to the, your journey from there. Absolutely. I'll also explain what RFE is because I don't suppose everyone knows. The O1 is a temporary work visa that was introduced in 1990 along with the H1B. Everyone knows the H1B. It is the most popular work visa. So the similarities are they're both temporary work visas, need employer sponsorship. Difference, O1 is uncapped. There is no lottery system. Yeah. O1 can be renewed forever technically. Yeah. The H1B is limited to six years. And the O1 does not have a minimum wage requirement, meaning you don't have to be making X dollars an hour if you're on the O1 in a certain role. And so all of these qualities make the O1 an excellent visa for founders. And especially for, I would say, solo founders like myself. Um, that's brief on the O1. Of course, because of all the advantages, it's not meant for everyone. Yeah. The O1 has an incredibly high bar that you have to meet. And you have to show that you've been consistently contributing very significantly to your field for a few years. Um, and so they measure that in the form of eight criteria. And you have to meet at least three out of the eight criteria. I call them the eight pillars. And so that's, the, that's about the O1. I filed my O1B uh, as a writer in education and technology January 2022. I got the RFE in February 2022, within like two weeks. Uh, it was disappointing, but I was pretty, I was pretty like, it's okay, RFE, not the end of the world. RFE means request for evidence, which is USCIS or US government's way of saying, we don't think you're there yet. Give us more evidence. And so we spent three months gathering more evidence, more screenshots, more emails, and then we resent the whole application April 2022. And then I got the denial notice May 16th, 2022. That was a whole journey. Yeah. This is my naivety of knowing nothing about publishing books. Does getting a publisher solve some of those marketing challenges for you? Do they take that on or? Yeah. <laughs> Great question, actually. Or? Were you no, or, or so like in some cases when you get a service, they're like, we'll do everything for you, but you still have to go and do the marketing yourself, right? Like, um, yeah. So like, uh, I don't know how publishing works. I was just curious. Uh, I don't, That's the reason you want to do publishing. I don't either very much. I know a little bit about it. But I would say, no, just getting a publisher does not mean you're going to sell a million copies. Only for the rarest of writers like Atomic Habits or Tim Ferriss, it could happen. Because publishers want to put all their money behind people who already have a following. Because, you know, that's the way, that's how they win as well. 100%. So, um, yeah. I haven't thought through this enough to answer this question, but I'll just say that I want to get a publisher to take care of all the logistics, first of all. Because I think the logistics is probably the the worst use of my time. 100%. I know how to do it. I don't want to do it. So I would li like for someone who's good at that to take care of that. I definitely think I'm still going to have to do marketing from my side. That's never going to stop. But it would be great if I had a team of people whose like sole focus in exchange for giving money to them is to figure out all the places where, for example, I could go and be on a podcast. They get the podcast, I go and present myself there. Or they get a speaking engagement, I can go and do it. So just the operational work. Makes sense. Like you won't believe this, this Untrackle campus tour, you would think there was a team behind this. It was me and it was Narayan, who you met right now. Yeah. Just the two of us working part-time for three months um, just that, like we did every single operations on this. It's exhausting. Um, and I realized at least those parts I can definitely offboard to someone else the next time around. Um, but I actually, I have a friend of mine, Elizabeth, who published her book on um, like neurohacking through Hachette, which is this French publisher, very big publisher. I asked her, it's awesome. Did they help you sell copies? She gave a mixed answer. She said, yes and no. Like, they got me all the media attention, interviews, and everything. But no, it, it didn't translate to selling copies, really. Um, 
And so I realize that's why I focus on LinkedIn and Instagram still. You briefly mentioned in the beginning that I have some following there. I want to keep investing time into social media and growing that yeah. because I realize I'm in a job where I have to do the selling in some yeah. way. For, you have to build the distribution to. I have to build the distribution and keep doing that for my life. And I, I for not for a moment, you know, I feel, oh God, I have to do this because social media, especially LinkedIn, has been the single most like useful tool for meeting interesting people.